Walter Cronkite. And that's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I, I like, like it. it. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Back to every Disney movie ever. My name is Jess, and I'm watching every Disney movie ever today. I'm going to talk about the kids who knew too much, and I have Eric. Yay! This is my brother, and you and you didn't know that. Well, if you watch my vlogs, you didn't know that. But this is my brother. I love him. He's here for the kids who knew too much. The week celebration is going great. The month celebration is going great. And to start out, just like with every other guest, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. First question is, what's your favorite Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie is probably going to be a bit of a shock, but I have always enjoyed Big Hero 6. <gasps> Great answer. I love Big Hero 6. Uh, Henry Jackman did the soundtrack. You're welcome. What's your favorite Disney song? Oh, boy. You know, there are so many favorites, but I, I always dance when I hear a friend like me. Good choice! Oh my gosh, I am loving all the answers we've been getting for these questions. The Kids Who Knew Too Much is a 1980 Wonderful World of Disney television release. It's directed by Robert Klaus, cinematography by Jack Whitman, editing by Lloyd Richardson, music by Buddy Baker. It's written by Gail Morgan Hickman and David E. Boston, based off a book called Whispers in the Bloom by Nicholas Blake. Robert Klaus is best known for Enter the Dragon, Game of Death, The Ultimate Warrior, and Battle Creek Brawl. Jack Whitman was best known for Hawaii Five-0, Tales of the Gold Monkey, the Dukes of Hazard and The Amazing Spider-Man. Lloyd Richardson, I covered in the video all about Child of Glass, so if you want to learn about him, the link is in the description. Jess also covered Buddy Baker in the Many Adventures of the Winnie the Pooh video. Link is also in the description. Gail Morgan Hickman is best known for The Enforcer, The Flash, and Murphy's Law. David E. Boston is best known for The London Connection and The Milpitous Monster. I had to practice that one a lot. The film stars Sharon Glass, Red Daly, Dana Hill, Christopher Holloway, and Kevin King Cooper. Sharon Glass plays Karen, and she's best known for Burn Notice, Cagney and Lacey, and Queer as Folk. Rad Daly plays Bert. He's best known for The A-Team, Shanghai Noon, State of Affairs, and The Bad News Bears. Dana Hill plays Foxy, and she's best known for National Lampoon's European Vacation, Tom and Jerry the Movie, Magnum P.I., and Shoot the Moon. Christopher Holloway plays TJ. He's known for Chain Reaction, The Untouchables, and Blast from the Past. Kevin King Cooper plays Gus, and he's best known for Fantasy Island in this. The first thing I want to say is Kevin Corcoran produced this movie. If you don't know who Kevin Corcoran is, he's like Moochie. He's like, that's what, he was in Toby Tyler or 10 Weeks with the Circus or Mooncussers or Old Yeller. I think the film had an immediate start, meaning like right away we were into the story, which I actually was very into. I love when it's an immediate start, when it's appropriate. And this was appropriate. Totally appropriate. And when you see a death in the first three minutes. So. Yes, which we have to talk about. There was a lot of human death on screen. Um, I think two people total. Mm. I don't know if we could technically call them dying on screen because technically they either died in the hospital or died on the way to the hospital in the ambulance, which we didn't see. But we saw Cut them out. We saw them being killed. Like someone was injecting them with drugs to overdose them. And this is after the black hole, which the black hole was the first PG movie for Disney. So I wonder if then on TV they started in doing PG films as well. I couldn't find what this film was rated, but there's a lot of like killing and planned assassinations in this movie and corruption and all that kind of stuff. It felt much more adult than it was for kids, but it did remind me of the Horse Without a Head, The Monster of Strawberry Cove, and um, Emil and the Detectives. It reminded me of all three of those films because it was like this group of kids happened upon a crime of some kind or happened upon some kind of situation like that and helped solve it. And all three of those films are a group of kids that do that. So it definitely um, echoes those. The sound, you said the sound was very like 70s TV. You had commented on the sound. Think of having an old school VHS and popping it in the VCR. It sounds like that. It does sound like that. And then also, technically speaking, just as I've been saying with a lot of these films, it's very average. It was 70s, 80s TV. This was 1980, so it's technically an 80s TV movie, but it's pretty 70s, I think we can say. The movie technically could have and probably should have ended in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Uh, there was the the opening scene 
it could have been solved if the guys were just willing to jump in water. We'll just leave it at that. Basically, the kids and the guy driving them knew exactly where to go on a huge on a huge movie set. Yes. They just happened to end up in the right place at the right time with no explanation of how they found it in the first place. Yeah. And when you see stuff like that with modern movies, it really, really pisses you off. What did you think of the movie? All in all, it wasn't that bad for a made-on-TV made movie. Generally, plots in those types of movies aren't going to be that great, but I was pretty much into the story from start to finish. The acting wasn't too bad, no, no. considering the parts they had to play. Mm -hmm. uh, the girl, especially, was <laughs> quite entertaining. She was. And we had our own little hero and an old man in a nursing home, so that was fun. Yes! The old man in the wheelchair and the guy with all the helicopters. <laughs> They're my little faves. The guy in the wheelchair was hilarious, and Rizzo was hilarious. Rizzo's physical comedy was really, really funny. And then the guy in the wheelchair at the nursing home was mm -hmm. hysterical. So Stole the show. So if you're looking for a movie with a halfway decent plot, looking to kill some time and looking for some f fun physical comedy, this actually isn't that bad of a movie. But if you're looking for one that'll change your life, look elsewhere. What would you rate the movie? I'd give it a six and a half out of ten. Yeah? Like, what should we do? Like, helicopters? I think helicopters is good. Yeah, yeah, sounds about right. Okay, I'm gonna give it five helicopters because it wouldn't change your life, but it was great. I enjoyed it, but you know, it's just right in the middle. Five helicopters out of ten. Our total movie count is somewhere on the screen. Parents at home, Kai Connor, are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I've been putting out videos every day this week because it is the week celebration. It's been the month celebration. Be sure to keep watching every day because we are so close to 200. You can follow Eric on Twitter. He writes sports articles about the Bears all the time. He's very talented. Please check out those if you love sports. And if not, he's pretty funny. So you should check him out anyway, too. Until next time, which is tomorrow, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not sure if you are, so you do you, and don't be like all of the people that kill people in this movie. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Music by Buddy Baker. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Christopher Holloway plays TJ. He's known for taint. Oh. Taint. I know. Taint. <laughs>